Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're gonna to take a look at Gaussian Blur and the Blur Gallery inside of Photoshop. Now, one of the issues with using filters inside of Photoshop is that they are destructive, meaning that once you apply them, you can't undo them later in the process. So there's a way that we can use Photoshop to actually use layers and smart objects to turn them into non-destructive functions inside of Photoshop. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our image and we're gonna duplicate that. So we're gonna hit Command J or Control J on a PC and that's going to duplicate our layer. And then we're gonna come out here into this space and right click, and we're gonna convert this to a smart object. This is going to allow us to turn this into a non-destructive element. Then we're gonna go up here to filter, and then we're gonna go ahead and see there's the blur gallery, and we're gonna come over here and go into field blur first. Field blur works like this. You have all of your different blurs over here. Whichever one is ticked, is going to be active. However, you can apply multiple different blurs to one image if you wanted to. We're just gonna go ahead and stick with field blur. The blur amount, the more you give it, the more blur it's gonna get. The way field blur works is you have these little points. And I'm just gonna click, hold, and drag, and it's gonna allow me to move this point to a different location. We're gonna lower this blur so we can see how this works. And then we're gonna come over here and I'm just gonna come to this street and I'm just gonna click. And it's gonna add a second point location and this blur, we're gonna really blur it. So you can see this location over here isn't blurred too much, but this location has a lot of blur to it. Field blur allows us to set different points inside of an image and blur those either more or less. Now you can do two, three, four, five, six, it doesn't matter how many of these that you use, it's really just up to you and what you're trying to achieve. So down here, we have some bokeh effects. We have light and color. You can feel free to come in here and slide this stuff around and change it and see what it does. We have it working in what light range you want it to work. So this is working in this light range. If you change it and then you come in here, it's gonna change the range in which that's working. Now, I personally don't use the effects or the noise very much. Noise is the same thing. You can add some noise to it. You can control its size, its roughness, its color, and its highlights. I'm not a big fan of it, but just because I'm not a fan of something doesn't mean that you shouldn't come in here and kind of play around with it and see if it works for you. Once you're done, you can come up here and click OK. It's gonna apply this field blur to this image. Now these blurs might take a little bit longer than a traditional function inside of Photoshop. All right, once that blur has been applied, we can come over here and now we can see, because we created this as a smart object, we now have something called a smart filter. These smart filters will allow us to turn this function on or off by simply going ahead and clicking those eyeballs. We also have a mask, so I could come in here with the color black and make this a little bit bigger and I could just take that away from that area or white to reapply it. So we have the ability to use a mask as well. And then the really cool function here is, let's say we blurred this a little bit too much. Even if you did this days ahead of time and you came back in here, this is all gonna be saved. All you need to do is go down here to this blur gallery and double click on the word blur gallery and it's gonna launch you right back into the blur gallery. We can take that selected point, we can reduce that how we want it, and then we can reapply that to this image. And that is field blur. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Once again, I'm gonna hit Command J to do, once again, I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate that layer. I'm gonna right click to create a smart object. We're gonna come back up to field gallery and we're gonna go down to blur gallery. And this time we're gonna go to tilt shift. Now tilt shift works like this. This center area here will not be affected by the blur. And then it's gonna get progressively more blur this direction and this direction. 
So what this, this dotted line says is from this point to this point, it's going to feather it. It's going to start out at no blur and to 100% of whatever you have set here. And then after this, it's going to be 100% too. So it's going to take this distance here to get to 100% of your blur. You can control this by clicking on it and dragging that line up and down. So let's say I want that line right there, and I'm just going to leave that one there. If I want a little more area with no blur in it, I can simply drag these lines. And this is going to allow you to change that area and how much blur it's going to get. So I can come in here and add some more blur. Now, you'll see this effect. I'm going to blur this quite a bit. Um, a lot of people will take cities shot like this and make them look miniature. And so this is used with this tilt shift blur. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now that tilt shift blur has been affected. You can see this blurring out here and blurring out here sort of gives this image that miniature effect that you give. Once again, this is a smart filter, so we can turn this on or off. We can use a mask to apply it to a specific area. And that is the tilt shift blur. So once again, we will go ahead and delete this. All right, we're gonna go ahead and switch images. We're gonna come over here to this image that we have of this animal here. Once again, I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate that layer. We're gonna right click, convert this to a smart object. And we are going to go down to Blur Gallery, and this time we're gonna go to Iris Blur. Now, Iris Blur is a lot of, used a lot of times for animals or portraits or stuff like that. The way Iris Blur works is the area inside these white dots, this area in here is not gonna be blurred, and then it's gonna progressively blur out this direction. Now, since we wanna have our blur kind of fit this animal, we're gonna actually go outside. Once we go outside, notice we get those little arm with the two arrows. That's gonna allow us to rotate this image around. So we can rotate it to get it to fit. And it doesn't have to be perfectly 90 degrees. We can do it at an angle, something like this. Then if I grab one of these points here, this is gonna allow me to move all four points at the same time. So remember, anything inside this area is not gonna blur. So we wanna get it outside of the animal and that's working pretty good. If I want to come to here, I can grab this and make this area a little bit bigger so we can expand that. Now, you can further adjust this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the Alt Option button. If you hold Alt Option, it allows you to move individual points to a specific area. So everything else was doing it very symmetrical. Now we can do it sort of asymmetrical and sort of adjust those points or the image of how it's blurring. We can come over here, we can adjust our blur, and then once we're good, we can go ahead and hit OK. And just like that, it's applied that iris blur to this image. We can come in here and turn this on and off, and you can see it's blurring this area out. That is the iris blur. We're gonna come down here, and we're just gonna go into the filter gallery, and we're gonna come here to path blur. So these last two things, I'm just gonna show you what they do. I'm not really gonna use them on them because truthfully, I don't find them that useful. But if you wanna go ahead and try them out, I'll show you how these work. This is really either. It creates a blur by creating a path. So all you have to do is grab one of these points and you can extend it out. If you grab this middle point, you can make it arc or warp. And now your path or your blur is gonna follow this motion. You can come over here and adjust how fast or how much blur or how the blur works by adjusting these different points on the image and then the combination of everything over here. So this is creating a path blur in which the blur follows the path. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. Then we're gonna go ahead and I will close this and then I'm gonna open up the spin blur. Now the spin blur is pretty much useless unless you're into photographing cars or you need to use this for some odd special effect. Basically what it does is it creates a blur and a motion like this, like a tire is spinning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag over Adobe's website real quick here and kind of show you this. So basically if you had a car and the tire wasn't moving and you wanted to make it look like it was moving, you can apply the spin blur to it to make it look like it's either going slow or really fast. 
How many times is that actually going to come into effect when you're actually using Photoshop? Not too many. Maybe you could use this as a special effect. But that is the spin blur and how you use the spin blur. So we're going to go ahead and hit cancel and get out of that. And I'm going to delete this layer. And we're going to do one last blur. So I'm going to hit Command J. We're going to right click, turn it into a smart object. And then we're going to go up here to filter. And this time we're going to go probably to the most used blur in Photoshop, which is Gaussian blur. We're going to make a whole bunch of blur here just so you can see how this works. So it's going to be too much, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So Gaussian blur is blurring this whole area out here. Once again, we've turned this into a smart object. I can click on the white and make sure that I have a black brush over here because black is going to remove from a certain area and I can remove that blur from the area where I don't want it to be blurred and then everywhere else in the image is going to be blurred. Now you can see this horrible transition here. You can obviously make this a softer brush, but the reason you're seeing it is because I did way too much of a blur here, but we're showing you how that Gaussian blur works. So you can just apply a blur and then paint it into the locations or out of the locations that you have. So the way this would work, the opposite way would be to, let's fill this with black. To paint it into locations, we would just go ahead and make this white, and then we could come in here and apply that blur to that specific area. That's how you will apply a Gaussian blur as a smart object to a specific area in a photo. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.